You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Epic Ganesh from Florida. Their debut album is out now. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to The Pit. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, man. Maybe a good way to begin is for us to go around and let you all say your names and what you do in the band so everyone can match the sound of your voice to who you are. Okay. Um, my name's Connor, and um, I play guitar and sing. And, and? And I write most of the songs. He writes most of the songs. Uh, I'm Cece. I play drums, and I like do marketing and like graphic design and um, booking and all all that silly behind the scenes stuff. I'm uh, Dallas, and I make the bass go burr. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, you guys, I thought maybe a good place for us to begin is I always like to start with people's origin stories. I like to imagine everyone is a superhero, and you all have an origin story of some kind. So, take me back, if you will. Like, how do you guys remember finding your passion for music? Okay, I guess I'll go first. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, my passion for music started, I would say, around the age of twelve. Um, my dad passed me down his acoustic guitar, and it was right around the time I started getting, you know, those feelings and stuff. Um, so it was a, it was a perfect emotional outlet for me, and I just learned like emo acoustic cover songs and stuff like that and um that uh that made me light up and it always brought me joy always brought me happiness and uh i quickly started writing my own songs after that and i've written i don't know i can't even keep track of all the songs i've written since then but most of them you know i just forgotten let let go by the wayside um but uh yeah so then um kind of fast forward uh, to my early 20s and um, I kind of fed up with like the city life so I decided to get a place out in the country a little bit and uh, met my friend uh, Garuda and um, we started jamming a lot and that kind of opened me up to different styles of music and I, I fell in love with uh, like oldies and, and uh, psychedelic rock and, and progressive rock and stuff like that. And um, I think that's kind of like had big influence um, with how I write now, as well as um, like the old emo and post hardcore and um, all that stuff kind of that I started with. So I guess it's like a little good little summary there. I'd say so. Shit, I'll go. Um, I was really fortunate in, I guess, yeah, fifth grade elementary school. Um, I made friends with a girl whose parents had a professional recording studio. And uh, you can look her up, by the way. Her artist's name is Baby, but it's spelled B-A-Y-B-E. Uh, and she's in Nashville right now, killing it. But back in the day, um, I, yeah, we like, her mom had a Girl Scout troop and we like went into her studio and I like, got to try out the drums and I guess I just like kind of picked them up pretty naturally because her dad was like commenting that I just sounded good and I was like oh well that's cool I like I like sounding good at things and it was a lot of fun and uh yeah just playing with her and our friends and having like a little middle school girl band where like half the time we were like trying to figure out what our name was but we never actually did and then the other half of the time was like I don't know, do, trying to do Coldplay covers or something. And then um, <laughs> and then uh, high school carried me through with like marching band, I would say. That that carried me through. I think the, the whole reason I'm up here in Tallahassee and know these guys in the first place is because I wanted to join the FSU Marching Chiefs, which is like, I think the second biggest marching band in the States. And I ended up not getting in and I'm like super grateful for that because then I wouldn't have ended up in this awesome band, so... Um, yeah. So it worked say. out. Yeah, it worked out. It's one of those, one of those situations. I, um, got started around, well, it all started when my dad, he was a really good drummer and I always remember watching him play around like, you know, five, six. And I always knew I wanted to 
do music just because, you know, seeing my dad do it. And then he, he'd always expose me to a lot of like classic rock and that sort of stuff. That's what he loved. And maybe when I was like nine, nine or 10, he got me a drum set for Christmas, but I didn't respect it at the time you know, enough to take it seriously. And I never got into it. And it wasn't until like middle school that I took like guitar one and like learned some of the basic stuff. And then from there, it kind of got pushed off to the side for a while until I was getting into high school. And then I really started to play, especially in my junior and senior year, I really started to play a lot more guitar. And that's when, um, Around that time, shortly after high school, me and Connor started a band that's sort of more instrumental. It's like a math rock kind of project. And that that's how we really got started playing music together with a different drummer. And um, But then at that time, there was somebody else in Epic and F, but it eventually led to me filling in that role on bass because uh, alongside playing guitar, I had taken up bass some too. And it just kind of made sense, you know? Right. So no, maybe, maybe we can transition now to getting to know how this band really formed, because it seems like a really, like a lot has changed over the years, but it's now basically you guys are like core members. How did this all begin? How do you remember? Because I should have a pretty good story since I have all three of you here. <laughs> Connor's got the whole, the everything. He's got yeah, it. I, mean, I, I don't have to go like all the way back, uh, like from before they were do in the band. It, um, do it, do <laughs> it. Just briefly, like, I guess picking up where I left off at Garuda's jamming, I was, uh, you know, in just uh, all this beautiful nature around. And it was so inspiring because I just resonated a, a peacefulness within me um, that was so refreshing after kind of uh, my time um, living in the city and just my negative experiences that were kind of plaguing me at the time. I, I found healing out there. And um, and I also just found what felt like a, a new dimension of music within myself. And uh, I just have started exploring that and I, I've been exploring it ever since. So with, with Groot and I, we um, started the band and we, you know, he came up with like a bunch of these band names and I just went along with it and, and we put them online and see like saw like on Facebook, you know, who liked uh, what band name the most. And so Epic and Esh came out on top and then it's it just kind of stuck ever since. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, we needed a fill in one time, um, different lineup. And so we um, brought CC in for... Uh, practice wait can we talk about how we met yeah yeah yeah. yeah. we met we met out at this guy at garuda we met out at his property so the, okay we'd have like we got a painted picture stuff. of this place so this place that Cup <laughs> was living at um it's like tallahassee it's like a two hundred thousand people town it's not huge so and this is like 15 minutes out it's like in the country this guy is like huge in the punk scene in the 80s and now he, he like tur- went to india and like turned into a hippie and he has like a bunch of like old painted volkswagens on his property and just like drum circles and fires and like the first night i went out there because there was this place there's this happening place in town where these open mics would go down and i went out there once and i met i can't remember who i think it was alan at this this one guy on the back porch that was just like wailing on a, on a djembe and I'm like, this guy's cool. And like made friends with him on Facebook. And he invited me to this really obscure, like totally wordy, hippie ass event on Facebook. And huh. at the time I was like really involved with my church. Like this is like kind of a left field thing for me to go to. But I've always been adventurous. So I was like, I want to go. And I brought my friend and I go out there. And like before I know it, I'm like smoking a joint in this fucking like old ass VW van. I'm like, where? this is so cool and um and then i'm stoned and we're like around of course my mom's gonna listen to this and your mom but i don't care mom you know i smoke weed anyway so we're like around this fire and then um i have my cajon for those who don't know it's like that box drum that you sit on yeah and play between yeah your legs. i just got one 
Oh my god! <laughs> yes, they're yeah. great. Um, and I'm playing, and Connor's like on the guitar or something, and this other dude. We basically we basically met like playing around the fire. Yeah, I remember um, just kind of going, sitting at the fire, and just jamming. Kind of usual. We did this kind of a lot, and I heard a distinct rhythm on like a djembe. And it immediately made my head turn because it was uh, it wasn't like I don't know a normal uh, djembe sounding. It was like it sounded like kind of technical and creatively interesting. And so um, that I actually <laughs> before I even saw Cece, I heard her, and then I turned my head. I'm like, oh shit, who are you? Like, <laughs> let's become friends. Yeah, that's, that's basic- awesome. That's basically how I got recruited into the band because then he like. He hit me up because Garuda, the guy who owns the place, he every year goes to the National Rainbow Gathering, which is like, I don't know if you know about it, but it's this like temporary commune that gets formed every summer and like all these hippies like flock to it. Um, Yeah, it's really cool. It's like this pilgrimage. And uh, so he had to go to that. So I needed to fill in for him going to that. And then I ended up just like taking the spot, I guess. Um, yeah, he uh, Bruda eventually um, decided to focus on other things, um, and so uh, yeah, it was just obvious to bring CC in. I think at that point, and then the Adam era. Oh, then there's 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 more eras of members. <laughs> we don't have, we don't have to go too too much into that. I just wanted. To yeah, I mean, we went before. through a, a few bassists, like uh, three or four more bassists. We also at one point had a. Uh, bunch of horn players an ensemble <laughs> yeah it was like this chaotic jammy ensemble um and we played a few gigs around town and you know it was fun um but uh it wasn't something like you know getting a band like that tight like it wasn't it was very loose and kind of chaotic we were still just finding our footing and eventually as the band members dropped off uh we got tighter and tighter i at least it felt like and um eventually uh we just were left with a three piece and um i think that's when I, we really started to find our flow in my opinion um something about just the power trio allowed us to just simplify and like just get really tight and, and channel like a good force i think and then uh we, we brought on a key key player and that worked out really well i think for our sound and um we're actually pretty soon probably going to be looking for a key player um because we're a three-piece right now keyboard keyboard player we're all key players yeah (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) i like to think (laughs) good point (laughs) um so um yeah so that worked out uh for a while um and then uh the bassist and keyboardist went their separate ways and eventually um we got Dallas in the band. It was another just kind of obvious choice, me playing uh, music and medians with him. Um, medians. And, <laughs> and, um, and just his style, I think, uh, yeah, fits our sound. So, um, I don't know. you have anything to add to that, Dallas? That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have, we have consensus then. Right, that's that's the story of Epic and Ash, more or <laughs> <Sure>. less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, I really like this because it starts out. It seems really organic. You know, like you were all following music, really, and like you, like you said, you didn't, uh, Connor. You said you didn't even see CC. You heard something she was playing, right? And uh, and Dallas and you were already playing in another group. So it's kind of started off as like sort of like a loose idea, and now it's kind of refined itself down to you guys, you three. And you've written a ridiculous amount. I mean, you've actually not just written your debut album, but you actually have the next four albums planned out with like worlds and <laughs> stories and everything. I gave you so, away. Um, well, yeah, we, we've got a lot written. Um, I, 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 I have written a lot of songs uh, for the project. CC's got a few too. Um, and um, I, I really love the idea of just conceptually fitting songs together, kind of like the old school way of doing it i guess um and so i'm kind of attached to like certain songs like telling a story with each other um but also you know you've got to balance that with like being practical and and trying to like pump albums out and and whatnot um so uh yeah 
but yeah, we've got a, a bunch of material written and it's just about refining. Um, I would say like most of those songs um, are not fully written. They're about maybe between 50 and 60% if that. Um, and so, yeah, we're uh, so that currently right now, we're just taking a few from that pile that kind of work with like the vision that um, we have for this next album. The story arc. Sure. Yeah. And, um, and we're, we're just playing around with them, fleshing them out. Like we just did one recently and played a few shows, uh, with that new song in our lineup and and we've got a few more. Um, and it's also kind of a new, I think, creative direction from what we've been doing, which is, uh, fun. Um, but it's also challenging too. Um, and so it takes a little extra work. Yeah, like the album we just put out is very alternative rock. So those, those songs um, I wrote when I was at Garuda's at that um, like magical little hippie place. And uh, I wrote them, I think, mostly on an acoustic guitar, which is what I was used to writing most of my songs on at the time. And uh, so they kind of have that singer-songwriter, I think, uh, style to them. Mm-hmm. Um that might be a little bit different from the stuff that we're doing now. We, we have kind of, we're doing a little bit longer songs and like more. It's maybe. definitely more like co- complex, a lot more elements considering these are songs that didn't come from like the acoustic guitar idea that they, they've been a lot more expanding upon what we're capable of as musicians. I, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's well put. I, I, I feel that. Um, as well and um yeah i i uh i think it's really exciting that we are kind of pushing ourselves in that way and um yeah yeah like i would probably would not be the drummer i am today if it weren't for like my love for these songs and just wanting to like i don't know wanting to do justice that like the the riffs are and like the the structure is and like i mean i'm i'm a huge fan of this genre of the music that we're playing so i'm just like yeah i want to like my mind's like my mind comes up with parts that are like harder than i can physically play but then like it's it's such a worthy challenge to like rise to the occasion and like figure out how to play them and just like slow it down and break it down and like you know do it and that's that's been like my mo in the band since the beginning i've always like since since i joined the band i've always been like pushing my limits on my instrument to like meet the needs of the music i think and i'm just like (laughs) like that idea of just like writing shit that's outside of your actual skill level so you just have to get better yeah (laughs) i think that's one of the best ways to actually expand your skills is not just to like sit there and play an exercise over and over but actually write a piece of music that uses the technique that you're trying to work on and then you kind of learn it in a whole new way yeah and i've always loved the idea of, of being creative about being creative and so the the more ways you can be creative the more hedges you have against like writer's block and things like that so you know there uh, i think that um like me writing the skeletons of the songs and bringing it to the band is a great um, way to do it because it's very streamlined that way compared to like maybe hours of jamming and trying to like pick parts and refine them because that's another method um, but I think it is important to come at songs at different angles, try to write songs at different angles, maybe write songs using different techniques or write songs barring certain techniques that you think you maybe do too much and you need to mix it up a little bit. Um, and and that, I feel like, always can help um, give you a, a, a more rich creative landscape for much to work in. Um, and so uh, it's it's been cool kind of experimenting like – with the more, um, I guess, complex stuff or technical stuff. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's new it, and fresh and exciting for us musically. It makes a lot of sense because, like, in the beginning, say, with you just sitting in there playing songs on your acoustic and making things up, you still don't really know the full scope of what the soundscape can become. And now mm-hmm. you've kind of gotten a little taste of that. So, obviously, this is going to have a feedback loop effect and affect how you write. So uh, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I love how you, you brought that up because that kind of like circles back to the album that we just released. And um, those songs, me writing them, you know, on the acoustic guitar and, and being perfectly happy from the way they were, you know, I, I never actually would have dreamed that we would have, uh, you know, sat down to self-produce it and then like come up with what we came up with, like the end product was so different from even just like the band and like playing it um, just uh, as it was, even not acoustic, um, the before and after the, the uh, production process was just so different. And I, I'm not sure if that's just, I mean, it was our first album, so maybe that's just how it is. But I also felt like there's an element of like, because we were producing it from the ground up, it it lent, lent itself to be a more transformative experience. Mm -hmm. And um, and so like, just as you said, um, you know, I, we never would have imagined all the soundscapes or layers or instrumentation we could have layered on top of it with the uh, capabilities of, you know, modern technology, but we were slowly learning and figuring it out along the way. And it was, it was just a blast to yeah. do it. And it came out completely different than what we expected. So, <laughs> For you guys, do you think that there is any shared philosophy or concept behind Epic Ganesh? I would say um, kind of tying into what we've been talking about a little bit, uh, all pushing ourselves uh, a little bit beyond our limits, just enough, like in the appropriate amount to to keep the music engaging and exciting uh, rather than like stale and boring or repetitive or like a means to an end or something like that. Um, so I think we all have a core value of, uh, you know, pushing ourselves um, and, uh, I think that ties back into the meaning of who Ganesh is, too. The remover of obstacles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's some symbology there. Um, and I, I think there's, you know, d d different kinds of musicians, and one's not better than the other. I mean, there's some musicians are just, they just kind of can fly on, like, natural talent, and they just soar, and it's, like, a very easy going. I, now, being a professional musician is hard, no, no matter what way you spin it. But, like, some people's writing process is, a lot more free flowing and free spirited maybe mm -hmm. than like the direction we've chose to go, which is like painstakingly yes. detailed and whatnot. Yes. Um, but I see the value in both and, and, um, and I love both kinds of music. I love both kinds of writing really. And, um, and yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, that, that value of, of pushing ourselves a little bit beyond our limits so that, you know, it keeps it engaging. I think that that's something we could probably all agree on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I should ask just simply like uh, with the name Epic Ganesh, do you guys have any misconceptions that follow you around? Do you get any questions? Baba Ganesh. Yeah, people. We've we've heard Baba Ganesh a couple times. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> but as far as like I don't know, thinking we're like um, a Hare Krishna chanting or like worship band or something. Worship I don't know. band. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in a way, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, not really. No, I think, um, I, we haven't really had any misconceptions with the name. Um, I think people like the name for the most part and yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ganesh in India is like one of those gods that like is very, I don't want to say secular, but just like, cause India is like, and Hinduism in general is like, there's so many gods and there's so many different, like parts of India that worship different gods, but Ganesh is like loved all throughout India and all throughout the world. Yeah. It, it, Ganesh is definitely known for um, being widely adopted in cultures and, and um, yeah, and as you said, it, so. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of you guys wouldn't describe yourselves as a religious band. No, I wouldn't say religious. No. Um, spiritual maybe on to some extent right maybe uh, a little bit I, mean, I don't know maybe the themes of the lyrics i would say are pretty spiritual. right i it mean depends. i mean it gets into that sort of mindset but it's i we don't like identify as a religious band yeah i don't really identify it that way um but i i would say um if you define religion as like a ritualistic um thing that you do to have a spiritual experience, then in that way, we're a religious band, uh, in my opinion, right. because I feel like uh, music is one of the more spiritual, if not the most spiritual experiences I have in my life. 
and um and every time we get together it's a ritual you know and we right and we have that communion so in a way um in a way yes but i don't think you know the the paper the, the book term of religious band i don't think we would fall under that <laughs> but it is interesting that you say the word ritual because you know rituals uh, mean so much to us as human beings i mean the ritual might in itself might have no meaning at all but to us it can give us all sorts of meaning as simple as you know putting blowing out the candles on a birthday cake or or going to your prom these things represent things to us and going through a ritual of l- learning music this is very much a, a ritualistic kind of a thing to do a, a art form to to escape into Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So in that way, it is it is similar to um, religion. But I think that, you know, that branches across all, all music and, and bands. Um, that's Depending the on the intention that I you put it. into it, too. Um, yeah, sure. Are there any other rituals that you guys ever try in your own lives to just find Zen? Mm. Hmm. That's a good question. You want to go, Dallas? Yeah, I... Um... Besides smoking copious amounts of marijuana, I really enjoy <laughs> listening to. Um, I've, I've been getting like super deep into collecting vinyl, so I find that because it's so much more involved than um, you know streaming something on Spotify. It's like you got to pull it out of the sleeve, you get to look at the art, you put it on, you got to clean it off, you got to take care of it, and it's just that's pretty like. Medi- meditative in a way, right? So, right. I, that's definitely something that I've been getting into really big that I enjoy. And um, they they like to do a lot of yoga, but that's for the birds. That's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's more so me. I do I do the yoga. I do I do all sorts of things. I have a shrine in my room. I go like, um. Well, actually, we um we haven't really done this with you too much, Dallas, but. We'll, we'll, do this, we'll do this in groups. We like to just like, well, actually the first song on their, on our album is called heads together. And that's just like the super awesome experience of like standing in a group of people and all going home. Um, and like, like extending the, um, like singing it as long as you can, um, and doing it like at least three times. It's crazy. Like there have been times when I've done that, Connor and I have done that with groups of people and it feels like we're on a spaceship after a while. Like, and we'll do that like before shows sometimes. And it's a, it's a very nice headspace. So where Connor and Cece like to bring the spiritual elements, I, I definitely like bring it back to reality. (laughs) (laughs) It's a great balance. If there's, if, if there was a skeptic, it's me, but I feel like, I feel like that brings a great dynamic to it, though, you know? You feel as though you're the very rooted one. For, uh, it, yeah, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. That's awesome. I like it. I like it. I like the whole vibe. It's really good. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a little bit about this music video that you guys did in VR, the whole 360 camera thing. Yes. How? 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 <laughs> it was a school project for CC. She can tell you all about it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, back in 2018, this is my favorite class I got to take. I studied digital media production at Florida State. And I got to take a class that was basically, yeah, doing 360 video, um, VR video type stuff. And that was like, a super nice camera that we got to rent out for that was the final project for the class. I think it was just like a, it had to be like a narrative of some sort. And I'm like, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone and make a music video for my band. Gosh, darn it. And got to rent out this 8k freaking this camera. Like is so cool. Uh, Insta 360 makes it. And it has like, I think it's just like this ball and it has like six or eight different lenses on it, like all over the ball. And you just like plop the camp. Well, you don't plop it. Obviously, it's expensive. <laughs> you like put on a tripod in a spot, and it just records everything around it, and it's super cool. And uh, so, yeah, I like wrote this like narrative to the song. So, yeah. So, like the funny thing about music videos is like sometimes bands will like make a music video, and it has this plot and 
there's like um, there's like dialogue in it sometimes and it'll like go over the music and that's just like so much so I tried to I literally like wrote out the timing because it's a nine minute song so I wrote out the like timing of when there's like lyrics in the song and then when there's uh instrumental part and I made the music video to where in the instrumental parts the narrative would go on and then in the lyrical parts it would be like filming us live performing the song and Connor singing the lyrics. So it was like this whole heady thing. And then, um, and there was like this challenge of like doing something that like wasn't too crazy, but like was still told a good story. And I just decided to be like the story that the narrative that goes on is like, so the song is called headless and the narrative that goes on was basically just like my personal challenge with like being headless and like thinking too much and but like trying so okay so the whole idea was you can watch the music video in vr so you literally put on to watch the music video in its optimal state you put on a headset so i wrote the the narrative with the idea that when you like you put on the headset and like I'm, I guess it's in like second person because I'm like talking to the person watching the video basically. And like the person that's watching the video, I like wrote from that perspective as like, from my experience of like thinking too much, like overthinking life. And then there's a scene at the end where like I like take a bath. I like go into the bathtub and then I like disappear. And my like, my professor interpreted that as suicide for some reason, but he wasn't the only one. There were a couple, him or at least one other person like thought that that's what it was. Oh. And that it, it was meant to be more symbolic of like a rebirth, but uh, he literally emailed me like concerned about my mental health. And I'm like, no, no, oh. no, everything's fine. <laughs> but I thought that was, that was kind of funny. Um, and uh but anyway, yeah, that's like, that was a lot of fun to make. And um, I was trying to figure out like how to keep it fresh with the scenes where it's just like the band. So like the scenes where the band is playing, that was our first practice space. It was in Connor's parents' basement and we called it the Zen Den. And um, man, so many good times in there. And that's where we got to practice. And we just like, we just tried to come up with like affordable, I guess, ways to like, make make that space a little bit different every time like the scene came back to it and like by the end we all have like face paint and <laughs> i got these bubble machines and i thought they were going to be so cool and like for some reason the soap was like so heavy and the bubbles just <laughs> they didn't even like float away they just <laughs> they just like sunk in the corner and just like made it made like several soapy <laughs> messes in the room <laughs> such a big fail but everything else was like the face paint came out good and i think we had like black lights and stuff and like it was a good time people people took took their shirts off and it was a good time but <laughs> not me but um yeah so yeah that music video was fun we are due for another one um i was i was definitely like trying to come up with ideas for one for this album and i've just like completely brain farted but i say it's never too late so <laughs> And now I, I want to ask you guys more about your upcoming album because we, we've we've heard Epic Ganesh, and now you you've already got material written for your next album, right? You've actually written that you've chosen the title for the next album, haven't you? Um, it's it's a work in progress right now. I'm I'm thinking the, the Waking Dream, but Act I'm, One. Uh, I don't. <laughs> that would that only be if it were like under one album, just to differentiate that double, the difference. But double disc, there's no maybe. point in doing that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So dreaming or the waking dream, but I, I don't know if we're gonna stick with that. But the the basic concept is um, kind of the experience of waking up slowly from a dream um, while you're still in it. So, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, So uh, we've got a few songs right now. We've got Phase Shift that we just wrote and we performed uh, on our last little mini tour. Um, And then we have uh, Dream Eater, which is the next song we'll be working on. And we've got, um, I would say... Three other songs. 
Yeah, uh, don't drop them all, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think how much of it's written. So, yeah, we've got pretty much most of the other songs written. And then I, I always like to keep it fresh for the album. So, I mean, there'll be some tracks that are just going to be maybe improv or like an interlude, mm -hmm. something spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. um because like you always gotta have some of that that was on. yeah that was heads for this past album that was heads together and then fy 2078 was like not planned that crazy experimental yeah we did bit. the heads together we, we 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 did that live sometimes oh, we did but that. we never like practiced it or anything and then we just kind of like it was very free form yeah and then the the interlude on that the album we just dropped that was yeah kind of spur of the moment so i i had a lot of fun doing that so we're probably going to do more of that uh, with this album but for as far as like the main tracks go i think we i at least have them mostly all written and then we just gotta refine them and, and write a little a few more parts to them i'm like in this age of streaming though i'm like jonesing to just like put a single out and i was kind of thinking that like we would put out we we talked about this the other day we would like put out uh some singles from the album on the streaming platforms as singles so there's like more releases, so more yeah, opportunities. We, we don't know what we're going to do. There's no point in talking about that right True, now. true. <laughs> it's, it's That's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is kind of a staple question that I always ask people, and it, it's kind of a corny question, but I still like to ask it. What advice would you guys give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Oh, I like that. <laughs> Dallas, you yeah. go. Uh, don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> simple <laughs> answer. I mean, it's simple, but also, you know, I, I've always resonated Deep, with the the quote from, I think it's Think and Grow Rich, um, Napoleon Hill or something like that, uh, where it's... Um, uh, genius doesn't breed success. Uh, there are plenty of geniuses that, that don't go anywhere. And, um, but persistence does, you know, as, as long as you're persistent, then, then you can usher the, the genius out of yourself and no matter what circumstance and you can succeed and, and, uh, achieve, um, the manifestations of your dreams. I, I really believe that. Um, so, I mean, yeah, building off what Dallas says, like, uh, persistence, I think, is, is a really important part. Just wanting it bad enough to just not give up uh, because, I mean, life's hard, obviously. Making your dreams come true is a very hard thing. So it's uh, like for me, I mean, you know, wanting to do the band stuff and like tour and play music all over and, and just write these songs. And, and so, I mean, that it's extremely challenging. I mean, it's probably the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life um, as far as like any goals I've had um so I would just say for anyone else on that same path to you know what's gotten me this far at least is uh just not giving up you know just just keeping I've out. actually got I've got more than just three words I, I would also say um failing is a very big part of succeeding or achieving your dream so definitely don't be afraid to mess up because that's you know part of it you kind of have to get to some dead ends in order to break through that and find yourself on a better in a better place at least you know towards what you're going for definitely can't be afraid to mess up yeah embrace your weirdness um yeah you know fly your freak flag all that good stuff <laughs> yeah and i want to add one more thing which is um Basically, what, what's helped me a lot from, from even from back when, like I said, in middle school at my friend's parents' studio, is just envisioning myself doing the things I want to do. Like whenever, <laughs> whenever I listen to music I love, um, I just like, I envision myself like playing that music or like our music just like in front of huge crowds and or even like more simple stuff, like envisioning myself, like taking a good take in the studio. Um, I get, maybe that's not for everyone. Um, I know it's not for Dallas, um, but it's more like, <laughs> it's more, yeah. If you're more into 
a visionary kind of learner, I guess, but it's definitely helped me a lot. Just like creating that scenario in my mind and putting myself in it. It just like makes it feel more real and tangible and less like far away and working from there. Wise words from people who know everybody. I have, uh, I need to ask you guys, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Hmm. Um, I guess, uh, if you haven't already check out our music, um, and keep on the lookout for the next album because we're, we'll be working hard to make it a reality pretty soon. Yep. On Bandcamp, Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, all the good places. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with the band Epic Ganesh. Their album, Epic Ganesh, their debut album, is out now, so go check it out. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Even though we're not a metal band.